Okay, first of all, who knows about Elixir? Who is there to discover something about Elixir? Yeah. And who is there to discover something about the actor model? No, you're not there to discover something about the actor model. I know you. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Elixir. So, yeah, I'm me. Uh, <laughs> I'm an old dev. Um, I try to be a software crafter. I'm very strongly opinionated. You'll see that. And I'm currently the CTO of Talent Labs, uh, which is uh, a nice company that you can come visit and work for if you are interested. They are paying for my uh, and everything. Okay, uh, what is Elixir? Elixir is based on the, is a, it's a language uh, on the Erlang VM, like Scala on the GVM. So the um, Erlang VM is called the BIM, and uh, yeah, that's it. It's uh, created in 2011 by uh, Jose Valim, which is an, a former member of the Ruby uh, community. Uh, he wrote many things about Rails, and he also worked on the multi-threading of the Ruby VM. And once it's done, he decided to do something else. Uh, it's a functional programming language. It's uh, very concurrent. It's based on the actor model. It's very scalable thanks to the actor model. And it's uh, fault tolerant. Yeah, yeah, one is falling. Um, okay, John Strong said that um, everything in the in the Erlang VM is uh, based on process. So Java is based on objects, and Erlang is based on process processes. Yeah, uh, I won't uh, read that for you. It's too long. Okay, what is the actor model, not pattern? Who who did that slide? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's probably me. Um, okay, so the actor, mo the actor model, uh, how it's working. We have processes that each have a mailbox, and to communicate between processes, uh, we just have messages that are, that are passed from one process to the next mailbox, and not to the process itself. So it's a process that decides to read its mailbox. It's not uh, it's not forced into the process, okay? <coughs> so that's the end of the talk. Thank you very much. It's just all you need to know about the actor model. You know everything. Okay, now can okay, um, now I think I'll leave the slide and go to the to the computer and try to explain how it's working. Okay. You think? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah? Better? Everyone can read? Yeah? Even the one in the back? Okay, awesome. Um, so, uh, what we are going to first do is a little tour of Elixir and its tooling. Um, up. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, IEX, which is uh, the interpreter for the Elixir language. So we have a nice uh, interpreter. Um, and we can write things like that. One plus two gives three. That's the best calculator ever. Um, we can also do some things like that. Uh, we want to spawn a process. So we just say that we are going to Spawn. Uh, I'm this. I'm defining here a closure, or lambda, or something close to that. Um, and this will just print something on the console. Uh, yeah. And we had a process. It gives us the PID, which is one hundred and eight. Uh, I can also get the process in a variable. Here is the PID in my variable. It's uh, 
so it's typed it's typed yeah i know i do the uh, i uh, say type because uh, as color are here yeah because uh, elixir is not typed um it's not statically typed uh, it can be type checked um, before the compilation or after the compilation, uh, but there's no type um, uh, matching at runtime. Okay, uh, so my process, and I can say, I can look if it's alive. Um, PID. And my process is dead. When you start a process, it does what it has to do and it dies. You can do things uh, about that, but that's how it's working. Uh, let me get my notes and to not forget anything. Yeah. There's, there's no argument. Um, I can pass an argument here. But yeah, fn fn is uh, fn and the uh, little arrow is a way to define a closure. That's uh, that's all you need to know about Elixir here. Um, now we need to go to a real project, so we are going to leave the the console for now, and hop, and create a new project. Oh my god! Mix new. So Mix is a tool to build and get the dependencies of our project okay so i'm going to create a project that is called dungeon yeah um the use case i'm going to try to to implement here will be a hero that is a princess yeah uh that will try to kill a monster that's very smart and everyone will be processes and you'll see that maybe if we have time We'll go to the hive that is responsible for creating monsters. And I'll try to um, explain all the different things about uh, that. OK, so mix new dungeon. I'm creating a dungeon. It gives me a new, um, it creates lots of things for me. Uh, and I'm going to show you this in my IDE. Oh. In Vim, sorry. Um, so we have a mix.exs. Uh, this is the package.json. If you, you and I don't know how it is in Scala. Or the pom.xml in Java, yeah. Uh, and we have two things: uh, lib and test. I can probably do something like that. Yeah, it's much better for you. Uh, so it has created me. A dungeon and a test. First thing is I'm going to add a watcher because we are going to do that with TDD. And first thing first is add a dependency to have a watcher. Uh, where is my <coughs> dependency? Uh, sorry, I'm going to copy the line from somewhere. Here. Up. And I'm going to mix, no, oh, not here. Dungeon mix depths.get. And I have some network, so it has created me some, get, it got it. Mix test.watch. And now I have a little watcher that is watching my test. When I save something, it's running the test in, in the background. Uh, first, Let's create a hero, a princess. Uh, mix gen module. Oh, um, yeah, mix gen module. The gen module is a little package I created for myself that will that will create a module and the associated test. We run that. I'm creating two files. We have two new files: the princess here and the test for the princess. Okay. Uh, what we want is something that will... Uh, do I do that? 
Yeah, I'm going to remove that. Um, I'm going to create a test that is uh, spawning a princess. No, no joke around that. Um, uh, so we are going to spawn a process. So yeah, the um, way to define a test case in Elixir is <coughs> test. You name the test and do end. Uh, for those that have played a little with Ruby, uh, the syntax is quite close to Ruby, uh, at least for functions and things like that. So we have do end and not uh, uh, curly braces, curly braces. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right in English. Okay, um, so what we want is that we are going to call the princess uh, like uh, start and hope that it's a, it's a process. Uh, yeah, I'll try to do that. It's failing, that's okay. I'm going to my princess. I remove all the useless code. Um, so I'm going to define the start function. Yeah, and do and uh, it's not taking any argument, so I can remove the braces. And what I want to do is spawn something. And this something will be a function that is called, that is in my, uh, in my um, test, in my uh, module. So fn hi, I'm calling, I'm again creating a closure. It's calling the function hi, and it's ending. Okay, I don't have this function high. Uh -huh. And we can just say, oh, okay. And it's failing. No, princess is not available because I forgot to alias my dungeon dot princess. Yeah. Okay. What? <coughs> okay. Um, so uh, we started a princess, which is kind of great, uh, and it's still alive. It says that it's alive, but we just uh, tried that before, and it was dead. And I just did kind of the same thing. Okay. Why is it alive? because we are not waiting long enough for the process to die. So we can do something like that and wait for one millisecond. And uh, I'm not asserting anything. And I'm going to refute that the process is dead. Ew. That the process is alive. And it's working. So um, this is a, a, um, a caveat in the, no, not a caveat. It's not that that's a problem, but uh, process take time to die. The thing is, one, once a process is declared for dying, it will never read any message from, uh, from, it, from its mailbox. So you are sure that it won't continue to work once it's declared for, day, for dying. Uh, the system is still seeing it as alive, but it's not true. It's not. Uh, it's n it's not going to work anymore. To do any more job. Okay. So we have a princess um, that is saying hi and dies. Now we need a monster. Same thing. Um, oof, it's chain module. The monster. Hello. We have a little monster that is not doing much. Again, I'm removing that. I created the module, and uh, I think I love myself because every time I create a module, I just remove everything it's created for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK, uh, so the monster will be a gen server. Uh, we've seen processes, like mm, uh, fundamental processes uh, in the Elixir world, but um, the Erlang ecosystem built more, compli more, more complicated things around that to do more job. 
Uh, what we want is a monster that is a gen server. A gen server is what we call um, behavior. So when I say use gen server, it's going to do a lot of things for me. Uh, the first thing I need to do is init my gen server. Oh, I forgot things. Do end. Mm. What? I'm in the test. Yeah. GDD. That's why I wanted to do that. I'm go just going to pass that here and come <laughs> back later. Never for never lose something. Okay, in the test, what I want is uh, the same thing. Uh, spawn a monster. Okay. Uh, so spawning a monster will be exactly the same. Uh, I'm going to alias monster already. Uh, dungeon dot monster, and I can use my monster here. Monster dot start link yeah i'm using something new start link is the way to spawn is the the real way to spawn things in the in elixir and to spawn complete um, complete processes um so it should give me a pid which I can call a monster, uh, and I will do exactly the same. Assert that my process dot alive monster is true. Um, okay, it's fading because uh, undefined function test. Ooh. Um, No, it's really not so. Uh, damn. The case. Okay. Same. Um, the um, X unit is a. It's better? I'm sorry? Did I kill anyone? No, not yet. Um, okay. Um, so we have. Uh, we have a monster to create. Uh, it's a gen server. The function init needs to return something like that. The args of the of the process, and we are spawn start link, um, which is taking what uh, state. So our process will have a life. And. Um, and I need to return something. What do I need to return? Uh, the knife. No. Start link zero is undefined. Okay. Ooh. That's true. Because I'm in the test, I'm calling that. So I say that my uh, monster will have three life. Oh my god, I'm forgetting all oh my uh, gen server dot start link. Uh, my module is my module. Uh, init args, this is where my life is coming in question, and I don't have any option for now, and I don't return anything. Okay, um, what we see is that. Uh, a gen server is going to return something of this form. Okay, because it created it, okay, and a PID. And in my test, what I'm testing is that monster is a process in itself. It's not the answer, the response of the gen server, okay? So I need to return only the PID. Um, here I'm doing some pattern matching. Everyone is familiar with that. Yeah, in Scala, you have pattern match. OK, um, let's continue. Uh, now what I want is that my princess can attack the, um, the monster. OK? Uh, to do that, I'm go we are going to 
uh, write a little bit of function. So first, we are going to 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 say things like ah client API. Here is my client API. It's what is called from outside the gen server. Okay, it's uh, the API that will be used by the princess to interact with the monster. Um, like attack uh, a value for the attack, like uh, value. What? Um, and to do that, we are going to again use. Oh no. I need to specify which monster I need to call. Uh, and here, gen server dot handle. Okay, we have two things: handle cast and handle call. I will use handle cast for now, and I'll explain what is uh, the handle cast. So handle cast monster, and I'm going to say that we are going to attack with a certain value. Oh, I forgot to do some tests. Um, okay, in the dungeon, because um, yeah, we we can test that in the monster also. Test uh, monster can be attacked. Do and okay, so I'm starting a monster. And I will do something like that. Um, monster dot attack. Ooh, attacked. That's how I name it. Oh, okay, attacked. So my monster needs to be attacked. And how do we test that? Less life? Yes. Okay, so we say that um, this will not return anything, and we probably need to do something like that. get life monster, and we need to assert that monster of get life equal one, right? Not bad. Okay, uh, so my monster has a life, and it can be attacked. Um, but I have not implemented the server side of the gen server. Uh, how we do that? It's by defining a handle. Uh -huh. Yeah, we handle cast. Gen server dot cast. It's not handle cast here. I'm going to cast something. Um, handle cast, uh, and we are going to pattern match the value we have passed. And it will also give me the state. So that's what the gen server is doing for me. When it receives, oh, when we, when we, um, when we pass a message to the server, to the gen server, uh, it will automatically call um, the corresponding function and try to find a function that matches the pattern of the arguments. And it will also provide the state of the gen server. What we have defined here in the life, the life here of my monster, it's in fact the state of the server. We can have a very complicated uh, state. Here is just the simple life of the, the a simple hint. Uh, no, this this matters. This matters, and the handle cast matters. What's uh, dif different differentiating is the pattern match here. Yeah, you you will ha will have that. Um, it's just a way to not have uh, multiple keys. I haven't shown that in the in the princess, but we'll we'll come come back to that. Um, so where am I? Uh, so what I need to do is 
return uh, return something. So I'm not going to reply anything to the caller of the process of the message. I'm just going to um, to reduce the value. Okay. So I'm not replying anything, and I'm just updating the state. I'm giving back the state uh, that I want my server to to have. Uh, um, after the execution, okay. So now we need to probably Dave get live uh, of my monster. Uh, we oh, we don't do anything strange here. Um, the gen server, when I cast something, um, it's asynchronous, so. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to reply to anyone. When I call a gen server with the other method, it's synchronous, so it will wait. Uh, same here, and I'm just going to ask for life. Okay, and here I'm going to def endo call. Oh, life. Um, here, uh, um, I don't know why I need to 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 get that. Um, look, so handle call takes three arguments. The pattern, the, the pattern I want to match. Uh, it gives me uh, the color. I have the address of the color, and I can send back the, a message to the color. And again, the state of the process, so the life of my monster. And here I will just uh, reply with. Uh, Reply. The life, uh, the, the response I want to reply, and the new state if I had something to do. Oh, and it's working. Uh, my data are passing. So um, um, we have st we've started a monster, so a process with a state of three. We say that we wanted the process, the state to be reduced by two, and we got the process. The, we, we read the state of the process back. Okay, so we are come on. Yeah. So we have cast call. Cast is asynchronous. And the call is synchronous. Okay. Synchron, synchronous, something. So that's our first gen server. Congratulations. Um, the gen server is the um, main concurrency. Uh, it's the main way to interact with process. Um, the fact that we are able to store uh, a process uh, a state and be able to interact with messages uh, it's uh, the main way to interact with process in Erlang. Um, I don't know if it's very clear, but uh, we have a level of indirection here. So the client API is uh, by default decoupled from the client server, the server implementation. Uh, that's um, the standard way to, to work with uh, Gen Server. So we have our client API that can move, and we have our server that is uh, that is uh, completely decoupled. Okay. Now we need we want to the princess to do something because she just says hi, and we want our process to be, our princess to be smarter than that. No. Yeah. Okay. Same thing for her. Um, we're going back to the to the princess, and maybe we can just yeah. I'm going to skip. What time is it? Okay, I have 20 minutes. It's okay. Uh, so we're going to the dungeon. The dungeon is where the princess will fight a monster. Yeah. See, I've worked. I've prepared the talk very much. Um, so uh, we need a princess. So a princess, uh, that is a princess, 
the start and we need a monster uh, which is a monster dot start link you'll see the difference between the start and start link um, I, I can can explain uh, when I just start a process like that with the spawn keyword um, the color process is not linked to the I am not linked to the princess whatsoever I don't know if the process dies I am not aware of that if I start link my my monster, so it's going to start the process and also link the um, spawn process with the color process. So the color process will be informed of what's happening to its linked processes. Okay, so if my monster dies, um, the color process, which is my test case, will be informed by that. Okay. Uh, that's the uh, fundamentals for supervi supervising uh, processes and be able to interact with them. Uh, so my princess and the princess, uh, how we will do that? Princess dot uh, attack monster. So she will attack a monster. So we need to say that uh, which princess is going to attack. She is going to attack the monster. And that's pretty much everything we want to do. Okay. Um, so here my... Um, ah. Okay, I'm going to start a killing machine. It's just because I don't want to rewrite my test that is calling high and waiting for the high to be to be there. Uh, so I'm going to start a killing machine because the princess is obviously a killing machine. Um, and this, how do I do that? Um, and this we will. Know. Um, wait, wait, uh, I'm lost. Uh, I'm probably got something like that is working. Okay, uh, so I'm going to spawn the start killing machine pr uh, function. Okay, and this function will do something interesting. It will a way to receive some messages okay so the messaging is of uh, this form um, that's a tuple and it has a message type and probably a value <coughs> okay so ooh, we are going to say that I want to attack um, which monster we want to attack and we'll do something here like monster what attacked uh, monster and the value of the attack which is probably two um, okay saving refute process alive but what is saying um oh well, yeah my princess is not dying anymore because she is waiting for a message to be cast on it okay um so now i need to do something like that def uh attack i need to define my it's it's still the same tricks we have um a server side and Oh, come on. And we have uh, an API that would be called by uh, outside. Um, so my princess and the monster. Um, and to do that, I'm going to send a message to my process princess with the 
attack and no. Up, attack and the name of my monster. It's been Yeah, that's it. Um once again I need to alias everything dungeon dot princess and same for monster Ooh. something is not working oh yeah yeah I'm stupid um oops no, no, starting is undefined or private. I forgot to give him. Yeah! So my princess is attacking my monster. Okay? Uh, now I need to check if the <coughs> message uh, got to the monster. If my life, if the life of my monster has, uh, the has been reduced. And no. Why is that? Uh, in the princess. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay. Um, so when I send this to my princess I should be able to attack it's right method yeah yeah it's not uh, restarting okay. uh, the princess will not restart at this point that's uh, that's okay So you want to restart the no? Uh, um, why is it not working? Mm, no. Okay. We'll do that by uh, um, debug. Um, Okay, it's cold. Yeah, maybe it's asynchronous. If it's that, I'm very, very sorry. I'm just going to split for, split for one. What monster that attack is undefined? You. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it was just a stupid trick. Uh, same thing, I forgot all my uh, aliases. Uh, and um, yeah. Okay, so now we have a princess that is attacking a monster. And what we need to check if, I want to see if my princess is uh, still alive. Assert uh, process dot alive. E. Uh, process princess. Yeah, my princess is dead. So she's um, she is spawning, waiting for a message, and when the message comes, she acts and she dies. How do we do that? Uh, someone is knowing. Someone knows how to do that. And anyone has an idea? Yeah, exactly. It's only what we have to do. And if we have um, in the gen server, the management of the state is done for us. In the process, in this uh, process, uh, the bare process uh, management, we have to do it for for us. And if we have a state to manage, it will be here. We receive the state and. We modify the state 
we create a new state because you can't modify anything in Alexia. It just creates new new elements, and we do that like that. Okay, I won't I won't do that because I want to move on. Uh, and now, um, what I want is my monster to die because when the life of the monster gets under zero, it should die, it should die. Okay, I have ten minutes. Ooh, it's going to be great. Um, I have to assert that. No, I can assert that uh, my. Oh, okay. Oops. My monster is still alive. It should be. Because I. Uh, okay, the monster is still alive. Now, what I want is my. Is that if I attack one more time. Uh, that the monster should be dead. Okay. So I'm going to refute. And I'm going to say that my timer dot sleep. Still one. It's one microsecond. It's really a very, very short. It's not a one second or anything. Um, Okay, let's go. Uh, so my monster, when it receives a value, I'm just going to um, case. If uh, life less uh, value inferior or equal zero, I'm going to do something. Uh, do end true. If I'm true, I'm going to exit. So self is me, uh, dead by princess. Yeah. And if it's false, it won't do anything. So if it doesn't have anything to do, it just uh, says no. Okay. Here, what I, so uh, self is my PID. It's the PID of the process running. Okay. So you identify yourself. With the self, um, so process, uh, yeah, and and then uh, uh, okay. Here, what I have here is the exit. Um, I received so the the test message received a message that it doesn't know how to handle, which is exit from PID dead by princess. So this is because my test process because everything is a process, so my test process is linked to the monster. You remember when I said start link and things like that? When I do that, I'm linking my process, okay? So I need to do something like, um, where is it uh, written? Yeah, process dot flag. So I'm going to flag my process to trap exit okay and to ignore uh, and it will try uh, trap the ah trap the exit so my process will not exit anymore when one of the process that is linked to to the process is dead so it's not it's not going to chain uh, the death anymore so it's working um, now I can do something funny that I can check. I can assert that I received the process because I I I am I, I received the message. I still want to be aware uh, that uh, the monster that is linked to my test is dead. So I can assert then uh, that I received uh, something that has this form. That is by princess. And it's not for. Why is not? No message matching. Huh? Dead by princess. Dead by princess. And it's working. Thank you very much. Uh, we should do some mob programming. Uh, okay. Um, so that's funny. But now my monster is dead and I'm stuck. 
the princess doesn't have anything to do anymore. Um, what I want is something that will recreate the princess, the monster for me. And we are going to call that a hive or a supervisor. Because in Elixir, we have something that is uh, in Elixir in Erlang. We have a, special a specialized type of process that is called a supervisor. And the supervisor only job is to monitor and manage the processes that it uh, that are declared inside of it. Okay, so what we are going to do is that uh, I should have something new. Uh, okay, I'm removing all that. Um, I'm not going to be a monster. And what I want to do is use a new. A new behavior. So, supervisor is like gen server. It's a it's a behavior. It's a, it's a specialization of my module. Um, supervisor only needs an init function. Um, def init. Uh, it takes some hours, I think. Um, and we are going to define a list of children. Up. And my list of children will be what we call a child specification. So a child specification is um, it's a map. So that's why that's how we define a map in Elixir uh, with an ID. So an ID it's like um, just monster and a start. So the start will be a tuple with the module we want to start the function we want to call start link and the parameter we want to to give the process three uh what am i missing why is my coloration failing mm. children okay start Not working. Uh, expected token. Uh, at high time. Yeah, thank you. Um, and inside the init, I think I need to. Start my supervisor. Supervisor dot. Starting once again the list of children, and here uh, I need to define the. Um, what do I need to define? Uh, it's the uh, the come on um, the supervision strategy. Um, so we are going to say it's a one for one strategy. Uh, if we have time, I'll show you. We don't have time. Uh, so what I want is that if I call just a uh, short test that says that if I call as uh, I forgot things. Start link one for one and I need to name my process because I want it to be called hive so I can find it back um, assert uh, process where is No. Um, what is it? I want to start my hive. Start link. Yeah, I need to start my hive. 
I get a PID and I want to be sure that uh, the process is running. That's a live oh, PID. And it's not working, and if I function live, it's okay. Uh, alias dungeon dot hive starting zero. Pourquoi j'ai pas starting? Um, I think I need to end. I'll just show you the what I've created in the um, okay the I should oh yeah I'm um, okay so when you need the supervisor you need to edit to init it with a strategy okay um, you need to once again define the starting function that will be called by the outside. Uh, and it's just uh, again calling the start uh, the starting of the supervision behavior. It gives you a new you specify here a name. When I specify oh when I specify a name here, it's going to use a regist uh, a name registry, which is another process that is uh, mm, mm, available for everyone for every process in the VM and. Uh, and the test will look like that so it's probably the same thing that I've done uh, and in the dungeon uh, so we have we flag the exit um, yeah and here I'm not starting anymore my monster by hand so I'm not mm, I'm not starting the monster I'm starting the hive which will itself start the monster okay um, um, to get the monster from its name, uh, I did, uh, did the same with the monster to have a name and not only the PID. I can go inside the, gen the supervisor to get the PID from the supervised thing, but it's complicated, so it's easier to name the process and get the process with its name. And to get the PID from the process, it's a method where is the the function where it is it gives me the um, the process and i can start killing it again and again and again and it will come back um, what i need to do is uh, after a pro after the monster is dead so the process has been has exited and the um, supervisor restarted it i need to get the new pid because it's going to have a new pid and i need to use this new pid to interact with the process again. Okay? That's it. <laughs> Question? Do you have ways to avoid uh, having NC frequency anywhere on the test? No. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It means that uh, each one of your tests has a race condition. Oh, what? I mean, it has a race condition because uh, if your system, if your, the, the load of your system can be high, for example, uh, things But may it's only in the test. That's true. It's only in the test. It's never in the implementation. In practice, you can produce a free test on CI, test that fail from time to time. Yeah, but you're waiting for one micro, one, one millisecond. It's, it's, it's really nothing. I, I, um, at first, I was putting slips like 100 milliseconds. And yeah, it was slowing my test, but now I just put one millisecond and it's not just that complicated. And I'm doing that because I'm showing you the intricacy of the processes management and how it's linked and how I want to see the message. But you never do, you really never do that in real code. You're just using the gen server for what it is and you know it's working. It's been, it's been tested, it's in production for 13 years. So yeah, because the gen server and the supervisor and the behavior, it's not Elixir uh, as it is. It's, um, it's the Erlang uh, code that is called behind. So Erlang code is 13 years old. Uh, it's battle tested. Uh, it's one of the most robust uh, code uh, out there. And um, 
we are um, we are having the better of two worlds the the good world uh, with uh, Erlang that is very robust and is not is not dying uh, and is having like uh, nine nines you know the nine nines uh, percentage of uh, availability around 20 years uh, and we have the nice syntaxes of the elixir uh, of elixir and uh, ooh, sorry and uh, and it's it's cool yeah you had another question okay. yeah Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every every handle something. Uh, no, handle cast and handle call need to return a state. They are the functions that will um, modify the state. It's where you put the business logic. Um, there's another handle thing that I didn't talk about because we don't have time. It's uh, handle info. Uh, the handle info is a way to to um, pass messages to the process that will not modify the state so you can interact with your process without modifying the state uh, uh, every time if you need to i don't know what you want to do with your process but the indoor info need, uh, works like that um, the imp implementation of the of the supervisor uh, uses uh, systems like the handle info to get the messages from the um, from the dying process, the killed process behind it, and uh, yeah. Okay. Another question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so by default, uh, I, if I had time, I, I could show you that. By default, the Erlang VM uh, are communicating with each other. Um, they just have to know the, the, uh, the IP of the other, uh, other VM. Um, it's uh, fully linked. They are fully linked. So they they are aware of what's happening on the other um, on the other vm yeah on the other beams so if you want to call a process uh, on another beam you can do that and it's completely tr transparent All right. you just need to know the pid if you know a pid you can call send a message to this pid um, right, so PIDs are yeah pids are unique at a at a specific time um, the beam is reusing the PID, so it can be a bit tricky. If you spawn process, kill process, spawn process, kill process, the beam will reuse the, the PIDs. I've been tricked by that and didn't understand why. I, yeah, but uh, and it, it's really um, a, a, an Erlang cluster is very very coupled. The VM are very very coupled. It gives you. Um, uh, easiness to call process and dispatch work around the cluster but uh, since it's very coupled and every every node knows everything that is happening on the cluster you cannot have a um, huge cluster of, uh, of work uh, right. the biggest cluster are 32 nodes which is uh, kind of small in the, in our world but it's um, it's cluster to dispatch work. It's not cluster to handle load. You see, you see what I mean? Yes. I, uh, so I, you you if you want to handle some load on your on your on your Elixir or Erlang uh, VM, you just spawn VM. You don't link them together. See what I mean? Right. But I would like to have the possibility to write to send a message to an actor who is on another. Yeah, but um, if you want to handle some load, uh, you are going to rely on some RPC, uh, oh. RPC like that. You you decouple. You have to decouple the the cluster that is handling the work and um, and the functional part of your application with the rest of the world. 
uh, handling the load of uh, of um, customer or things like that is not the same as handling the yeah. the volume of work that yeah. you would yeah um along uh, the, the 30 when i speak about the 32 node cluster um it enables you to spawn seven billion processes six six billion processes okay. um like yeah okay. yeah uh it's um th this cluster that i know of is uh, one that is managing edf um the french electric yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they are using it to uh, to test the load of the um, to simulate the load of the electricity electricity uh, network uh, and uh, they are modeling everything in the real world so you have one process for each um, light bubble for each um, um, yeah uh, each thing um, uh, heat heater yeah for each heater and like that they can create um, they, they, they really simulate the front and in each each process interact and and give that and it's uh, yeah it's it's quite it's quite uh, resilient okay yeah that's the guy and i'm even not lying she can that <laughs> okay thank you very much